This video is a response to one by the atheist anecdote, hereafter referred to as Brock, that defends a teacher named John Freshwater who was fired for bringing too much of his religion into his public classroom. Brock claims that Freshwater had an impeccable record. While his students did have good test scores, his impeccable record included confirmed investigations of him passing out an Answers in Genesis pamphlet to his students which espoused creationism. The investigations also confirmed that he passed out another religious pamphlet which encouraged his students to doubt science in science class. On those grounds alone, he should be reprimanded and possibly fired, because you just can't do that. If a Muslim history teacher passed out propaganda promoting the Quran as a more accurate book from which to learn world history than the school's approved history text, how many Christians would be pleading for his or her immediate dismissal on the grounds of being a religiously influenced, shitty history teacher? Would you be rushing to that Muslim teacher's defense after using a public teaching position to sway middle school children toward Islam, Brock? Freshwater's attorney argued, quote, he was exercising his academic freedom to explore controversial ideas, end quote. Actively promoting creationism in science class is not exploring a controversial idea. It's directly encouraging the opposite of what is supposed to be taught. An investigation also confirmed that Freshwater used a high-frequency generator that other teachers used to teach electrical current to burn a cross onto a student's arm. The cross lasted a couple of weeks, the kid's parents filed charges, and they were resolved outside of court. And that portion of the case was dismissed. That event alone could be grounds to terminate a teacher regardless of seniority or how good his or her test scores were or even how the courts dealt with it if it did go to court. Though the case was resolved, the school did have to deal with a lawsuit over it, which tends to tarnish one's impeccable record. There are two issues to cover here. One is the case itself and the other is Brock's dishonest presentation thereof. The only links Brock provides about the story are a pair of YouTube videos with Freshwater speaking on his own behalf. Regarding that, it's difficult to actually investigate what happened in a classroom, especially with a teacher's job at stake. In this case, it seems only one student really had a problem with the teacher's religious activities at the school, and therefore made a complaint about it. Ten kids were taken from the class and asked to make official statements, which favored the teacher. So this could be the case of one disgruntled student going out of his way to get a teacher that he had a problem with in trouble. However, if you take the majority automatically rule stance, especially when dealing with American high school students, you're ignoring the very realistic possibility that this was the one non-religious student in the class who was a social outcast that none of the other kids liked anyway. Maybe his complaints were exaggerated, but true enough that they needed to be taken seriously. But all the other Christians in class dislike him and like their teacher. And if that were the case, would you expect them to testify in a way that favors their Christian teacher or their outcast colleague? This is one more reason I'm an advocate for having cameras and mics on the side of a classroom. Links to my videos on that below. Now, I don't know all the details on the court case, let alone do I know what really happened in that classroom. I only know what I've read from press releases, which I have linked below, unlike Brock. And unlike Brock, I'm not going to pretend that I know the reality of the situation and make presumptuous conclusions. As a public educator living in the Bible Belt who's had the security of my own job in question for having a public, non-anonymous YouTube channel that refuted religion, I can definitely see the story from both sides. It is a bit strange how the lineup of questions Freshwater explained with his witness students that all said no to, and the things that he was actually accused of weren't quite compatible. So he claimed he was accused of teaching religion, having a healing session, an exorcism, teaching creationism and intelligent design, and burning a cross into the arm of a student. Students testified that he didn't do those things, but aside from the last issue, which as I said was resolved outside of the trial, none of those other things have even made it to the press release as to why he was being fired. It was because he handed out religious propaganda to his students and refused to remove the Bible from his desk after his boss asked him to. So I'm not so sure what the point was of him getting a bunch of kids to agree that he didn't do those things. This is a matter for the courts to decide based on the evidence or non-evidence available to them, and the local and state courts favored the school board handily in his first two hearings so far. Now back to Brock's dreidel rivaling spin on this story. His next claim is that the one problem the school could find with Freshwater was that he was a <gasps> Bible-believing Christian. Brock claims he was only fired for being a Christian and having a Bible on his desk and refusing to remove it. Now, stopping there, the school board would still be in their right to fire an employee for insubordination, even if that was all that he was fired for. 
being a public school teacher doesn't give you the right to put anything you want on your desk or in your classroom. Chances are the principal had heard accusations about Freshwater being too preachy, and he wanted him to put the Bible away to protect him from giving his accusers additional fodder. He didn't listen to his boss, and he paid the price for it. That being said, if being a Bible-believing Christian was the exclusive reason for Freshwater being fired, as Brock's video directly claims, then he must have been the only Bible-believing Christian teacher in the entire school district, and I find that remarkably difficult to believe. Now, Brock calls the people who presented evidence for Freshwater's removal anti-Christian bigots, and he automatically accuses them of fabricating lies and slander about Freshwater. Brock has seen that a Christian got fired for violating the separation of church and state, and his brain has jumped to saying that those who fired him must be anti-Christian bigots, and those who provided the evidence must be anti-Christian bigots too, and everybody's an anti-Christian bigot unless they agree with me. It's impossible that this person could have actually been wrong here. They must be lying. It's as bad as a man stealing from his work, getting fired for it, and then having people claim that he was just fired because of his ethnicity. Now, Brock also brings up the drop charges about the cross burn, only he words it as those bigots accusing Freshwater of branding children like cattle. You realize that a burn on one's skin is not the same as the searing hot cattle branding rod, right, Brock? Now, Brock then says that in today's mafia-style public education system, a teacher is more likely to win the lottery than be fired. He states that in New York, there are 700 teachers collecting $65 million in salary to sit around in a weird warehouse and do nothing. Unlike Brock, I actually am going to link to that story as well, but there's a lot wrong with how he presented it. First, he makes it sound like each teacher is getting $65 million, when really that's just an estimation of the total that this current policy is costing the state. The Weird Warehouse is a center where tenured teachers in the process of being fired have to wait for their due process before being terminated. That policy is in the contract their employers issue, which is supported by the state's union, which not all school districts in all states have, by the way. Mine doesn't. The funny thing is that Brock is using this as an example to prove that it's impossible to fire teachers when the ones he's referencing are in the process of being fired. It's amazing how much you can learn when you read past the headline of an article. Now, Brock continues making a jackass of himself by saying that the one thing those teachers didn't do was read the Bible in their own class of their own time, like his hero John Freshwater did. Had Brock bothered to think the issue through, he'd realize that not only is the workplace not Freshwater's own time, but that the reason Freshwater isn't still on payroll while awaiting his due process like the people he referenced in such a center is that he doesn't live in that state. It's absurd to compare a man in Ohio being fired for violating the separation of church and state to the inefficient unionized process of firing tenured teachers over 500 miles away in New York. He also sarcastically warned the danger of middle school kids potentially reading about honoring their mother and father in an effort to encourage having the Bible in schools. Yes, Brock, a middle school student who thumbs through the teacher's Bible might happen to flip to the page that hosts the Ten Commandments. Or, perhaps, the page that references circumcision, or incest, or murdering droves of people because your God doesn't like them, or considering people abominations for having different sexual preferences, or the part that forbids you from eating shellfish, etc. Maybe they'll flip to a page like that and start asking the teacher questions that would require an in-depth study of scripture for him or her to answer fairly. Do you think maybe that's a good reason to keep the Bible in church and out of the public classroom? Now, Brock ends his video by trashing all the cowardly Christians who stood by and allowed this embodiment of perfection to be fired for deliberately violating a constitutional mandate and refusing to heed the direct instructions from his boss. He claims that the reason all these Christians around him didn't support Freshwater is because that they must be afraid of those anti-Christian bigots lurking in the shadows who will spring forth and ruin their lives if they dare to stand up for a fellow Christian. This part of the video is particularly disgusting because it's complete projection. Christians in the United States are the overwhelming majority, and there are few more pathetic things to me than to watch a bloated, privileged majority play the victim card because the weak minority position dared to demand equality from them and won. I'm done with you, Brock. Links below.